No trip. Did anybody show up last week? Oh, no. Good. Because I meant to tell you the week before, and so I emailed. You all got the email and or text? Okay. All right. Good. Good. Okay. So we are running a little bit late. Technical difficulties. We need one of those images on the screen. Now, does anybody here remember the the Indian yeah. chief on the screen? Yeah. So. Well, I've seen it. You've seen it. It wasn't in my life. You don't remember it. <laughs> yeah. I remember actually uh, being on there at times. Uh, I remember uh, watching TV till about midnight when I was a kid. I shouldn't have been up that late, but uh, and then about midnight they would play the national anthem with the flag, and then that Indian chief would come on the screen, test pattern, and that's all you got all night. Uh, that's been a few years back. And you watched that? No, oh, okay. no, I didn't. Uh, but, but you know, if there was nothing broadcast, well, you didn't get anything, because, you know, there was no, 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 no the VCR or anything else. Are we on then? All right, all right, well, good morning. Uh, good to see you. We are on week three of D2, and we have been talking about how to disciple, how to disciple. So uh, let's just do a real quick review of where we've been. Uh, you know, in the first week, we talked about the parable of the sower, Luke, found in Luke 8. The four people in there, one was not saved. Uh, the three saved, one was backslidden. They were on the rock, no root. Uh, there was the barren and the thorns that choked out. And then there was the bare ring on the good ground. That's what we want to be. And the, the keys to fruit bearing are an honest, good heart, hearing and keeping the word, and patient endurance. So discipleship, what does it look like? It's the fulfillment of the Great Commission to be faithful to reproduce our spiritual life and in others, to be fruitful, and accomplish those four goals. So, you know, price of learning is repetition, four goals. Anybody got one? Worship. Aaron, worship. Anybody else? Evangelism. Pardon me? Evangelism. It, well, no, I, I mean, evangelism is obviously something we want to be involved with, uh, but not one of the key goals, yes. <laughs> Ministry is the last one. Uh, doctrine, obviously, we need to know our doctrine, but that is, uh, and you know, that's part of the process we go through. But the, one of the four goals, uh, Word of God, there's one more. And these are all established. Establish your disciple in the fellowship of believers or the church. Yeah. So there used to be a couple different ones. Uh, uh, Alan added, establish your disciple in worship as the first one, and I really like that, because if you establish your disciple and yourself in worship, everything else is going gonna, is gonna to follow from that. It really will. Uh, and number two is establish in the Word of God. Obviously, that's the standard. That's our, the rock upon which we stand. Establish yourself and your disciple uh, in the local church so they're comfortable here. They're comfortable with what's, what's going on. You know, uh, there's the universal church. There's the local church, and we are a local church. And you need to be involved in a local church. You can't sit at home and be the, the Christian that you need to be. Uh, and then establish your disciple in ministry is the last, for, last of those goals. All right, so, uh, and again, we will keep repeating those. Again, the, the price of learning is repetition. So, uh, and first we talked uh, uh, last for the first couple weeks about the philosophy of discipleship. You know those questions, who, what, when, how, why, what for? I don't know, whatever they are. Most of them are whys. Uh, we kind of talked about those. Why do we do discipleship? Uh, the philosophy. Uh, what's the principles behind it? And there are five principles. It is first the heart of God's mission. It is the heart of God's mandate. It is the heart of Jesus' ministry. This is what he did. He had two objectives, to restore lost, the lost image of God to man and to train his disciples up. That's what he did, discipleship. It is the heart of Jesus' co-mission. You know, we are the bride. Jesus is the bridegroom. Together, we have a co-mission, and we call that the commission. Uh, and there are five primary objectives in that, to evangelize the lost, like Sally said, uh, to establish churches. Those are qualitative, or I'm sorry, quantitative goals that we can measure, uh, make disciples, uh, to confirm the to to, uh, to conform to the image of Christ, and the fifth one is to bring glory to God. Those are the last two are qualitative 
goals, and discipleship is right in the middle, kind of brings them together. And then uh, last week we talked about the heart of the measure of the church and personal spiritual growth. Okay, so we can measure some of these things because, you know, we, we can see the church growth. We can see what, think, what things happening. So we talked a little bit about the process of biblical di- uh, discipleship, what it is, what it is not. We talked about the pattern of biblical discipleship. There were seven steps, remember, seven steps in biblical discipleship. And we will look at those in much greater detail uh, later on, I think in the second semester. Uh, and how we follow Christ's example. Uh, then we talked about the plan of biblical discipleship, what the mindset, what the mindset of the disciple should be. How we want, we're looking for transference of life, not just getting through 16 lessons. Uh, we all know these things. And then the foundation for spiritual growth, and that is, again, those four goals. Those are our foundation. Establish your disciple in worship, in the Word of God, in the, the church, the local church, and in ministry. So that brings us up to week three. And this week, we're going to start talking about the how, the practical side, the, the nuts and bolts. So uh, I don't know whether you all can find the. I'm not sure what page run. Someone know what page run in the in your notes? You can. You know my hearing is awful. <laughs> it really is. Twenty one page. All right. Uh, so so. This is the practical side, and. Uh, we're going to get some hands-on practical guidelines. In other words, how do we do this? How do we do this? So let me get uh, my slides up, and I will need the keyboard to do that. So there is a practice to discipleship. Practice to discipleship. So how do you get someone to disciple? Uh, well, the easiest thing is just to, if you win somebody to the Lord and you have a relationship with them, then you're the likely person to disciple them. So uh, that can certainly be one way. Uh, the second way is uh, the discipleship leader or pastor assigns them to you. So in our church, we've gone through a few different ways this has happened, but right now, if you're in a class or a ministry, uh, the class pastor will assign those people to you to disciple. And I say, I think we've talked before, many of you are already doing D1. Uh, And this is, like I say, this is some practical hands-on stuff. So I think we have a little bit of extra time. I don't know, we got a late start. But uh, if you have some comments or suggestions as we go along, feel free to raise your hand and and have some input into what we're talking about. But we've usually put women with women, men on men, couples with couples, Hopefully you're geographically close, so one of you isn't on one side of town and the other on the diametrical opposite side of town. Hopefully age appropriate uh, and with similar interests. Those things don't always happen. I've discipled people that I felt a great affinity with and other people it's like, we are very different, but you just make it work. You make it work. Uh, so to initiate uh, with the person to, to start the discipleship process, uh, they will fill out an application. And everything we have is online now, so you can just uh, put that QR code in your phone and and it'll bring it up. Uh, And then the pastor will sign them up and and put them with someone. Uh, When you're assigned a person, you need to call them, make a commitment to to schedule your first meeting with them. I like to catch them on a Sunday morning. I I just like that face-to-face contact so that you kind of... I don't know, size each other up a little bit, especially if you don't know them at all. Uh, but, you know, that's up to you. You can just call them. Uh, I would prefer you wouldn't do it in an email but, or text. Hey, you know, but whatever works, maybe for young folks, that's okay. I don't know. <laughs> and then you need to plan about an hour to an hour and a half or an hour and a half to two hours uh, for each lesson, uh, typically. So uh, what do you do the first time you meet? Well, Location, location, location. Um, you need to, to, to figure out where you're going to find a place that's convenient for both of you. Uh, and there are some suggestions. You can have them in your home. Uh, you know, there was a time when we, COVID was a problem. And did any of you all try doing discipleship over Zoom? I tried. I, I wouldn't say it worked incredibly well. 
uh, but we did what we could do. Uh, so, so, you know, hopefully we don't have to mess with that any longer. But, you know, it's good to have some snacks or something around uh, to make them feel at home. Uh, you can certainly meet at a restaurant or someplace, you know, between your homes. Uh, you know, I found that uh, a lot of these big grocery stores have eating areas where you can get some food, get a drink, whatever, and you're usually not too busy depending on what time of day you're there. Uh, that can be a good place. Uh, you can have a meal together. Um, takes a lot of time to do that, so depending on your situation, uh, I've known some people, the disciples, others, that every time you come, they go to their house. Dave Hill always says this. Who was it? I can't recall who he said uh, that when he was discipling them, every time he came over to their house, they'd, they'd feed them. It's like, I've never had a disciple do that for me. I, I, had, I did have one disciple. He would bring food on occasion uh, because he worked at one of the grocery stores and he'd bring it. And that was nice. But anyway, that can take a lot of time. Again, it's all dependent on your situation and what works best for you. You can meet at their house. Uh, and you could bring something you know, for them to eat. Uh, uh, so, so be careful about meeting here at church. Uh, there's so much going on. I disciple people here at church during the day. Uh, in the evening, uh, you know, having access is sometimes difficult. Uh, it's certainly open. Uh, we don't want you doing discipleship during a service. Uh, that has happened in the past. It's kind of like, well, if you're here during a service, you probably should be in the service. Uh, I, I think we've had people try to disciple on Sunday mornings. That is a horrible time uh, to try to disciple. First, there's just no place in the building to do it. Uh, and I know we have two services, so they say, well, we disciple in one service and then we go to the next one. Yeah, it just is not a good idea. Uh, so anyway, so getting to know you. You need to get to know each other. Uh, always start off with a time of prayer and end in prayer. And then give them your testimony. That's a great way to break the ice. Um, I think testimonies are incredibly powerful. Uh, they speak to me. Every time I hear somebody's testimony, I mean, it, it just touches my heart. Uh, and so you need to give them your testimony and have them give their testimony. You, you know, it can be brief. I mean, you'll figure each other out a little more, each, you know, who you are, uh, how you are as you go through the lessons. Uh, so you'll, you'll get details later on. Uh, but that basic testimony uh, is important. And it's a good way to get them to talk because you don't want to be the one doing all the talking. Uh, and some, I, you know, I've had folks that just uh, talk, 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 and questions, 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 and then I have others who just sit there and like, I dare you to make me say anything. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, it takes all kinds, and so you have to work within their personality and your personality, but you want to get them talking. And so ask those open-ended questions, uh, and getting them to, to give you their testimony is one way to do that. Uh, you need to put out a, the welcome mat and set the vision. You know, what do you mean by that? Well, we always want to keep the philosophy of discipleship and what it's all about in front of not only yourself, but your disciple. Why, why are we doing this? I mean, it's not just a program that we go through and, and uh, once you're done, okay, you, you check that off. I've been through that class. Uh, it's, it's a lifelong process. And keep in mind, that's the reason we drill in you the, the four goals. It's like we're trying to attain those four goals. We're trying to reach out for them. So if we're not doing that, uh, then we're, not, we're just spinning our wheels. Uh, use something that was helpful to you when you finally put it all together for yourself. It's so certain things turn on the light bulb in your own mind. Uh, you know, your disciple won't understand it all at first, but as they continue to be exposed to it, it will be clear, clearer. Remember, the, you know, the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. It's not, I don't know. You can use the, the different word there, I guess. Uh, but we need to keep it simple. Some of us have been Christians for many, many years. Some of us have not. So even some of the terms are just, we know exactly what it means, but your disciple may not have a clue. And some of the concepts that you just take for granted, they may know nothing about. Uh, a, a, a fellow I was discipling just not too awfully long ago, uh, when we started talking about the Word of God, he had no idea there was more than one Bible version. He just thought, you know, you have a, a Bible, and he, he didn't use a King James, uh, but he thought that was, that was it. There were 
No other versions. It's like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> there, are, there are plenty of them out there. Yeah, when you said explain discipleship, like, do you explain to them why it's important that they do this? Or do you ask them why are they wanting to do this? Well, I think both and. Uh, it's really important to know why they're wanting to do this. Uh, because oftentimes, well, not oftentimes, you'd hope it not be too often, uh, they're not necessarily doing it f for themselves at times because somebody else wants them to do that. It's good to know that uh, because you can l gauge their level of commitment. Uh, if, if, you know, their spouse is pushing them to do this. I mean, I, I don't, you, you should continue, but you'll find that their commitment may not be as great. But yes, you want to tell them, you know, this is why we do this. This, you know, this is what Jesus did with his disciples. This is, you know, it's not just a program. This is exchange of life. And, and ask them, what do you expect to get out of it? Why, why are you here? Uh, it's so relational. And then, but there's such a huge cost to doing it. Yeah. So you'd have to go over the, the cost is huge. Yeah. And is there any reason why they shouldn't continue with discipleship, like any reason why I want you to get to talking to them, like I should probably ask the pastor or hold off on continuing until... Well, I think there are reasons, but I wouldn't push that too far. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I've taken people through discipleship, and, and most of you who have done discipleship have had failures. Uh, but I always like for it to be on their part, not on my part, obviously. Uh, but I always feel like if you just get through three or four lessons and, and you don't, you haven't, yes, you haven't completed, but the goal is not to complete the lessons. The goal is to, to instill life and to pass these things on. So at least you've made some progress. Hopefully you're making some progress. Now, if you're not making any progress, well, it may be time to say, well, it, you know, especially if you're investing a lot of time in trouble and you're not getting, uh, it, it's not reciprocal. Well, what's the sign of not making progress? Like you're not memorizing the verse? I wouldn't say so. You know, we're going to talk about memorized verses here in a little bit, and that's a very personal thing, too. Some people are great at it. Other people are not. Uh, yeah. Uh, I Not necessarily, uh, but we'll talk about some tools. Uh, but I would say if you see no effort on their part, and if they're just showing up and haven't even looked at the lesson uh, and and... It really is a, an individual, personal thing. I can't say you, there's, here's a checklist of things. You know, I've had people say, uh, well, if we get through lesson uh, three, or we get to baptism, and they won't be baptized, we're not going any further. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. It's like it's sometimes some people are afraid of water, uh, and it just takes a while for them to get used to that concept, maybe seeing it happen in the service a time or two before they're ready. Uh, you know, I've talked to people that says, you know, you get the lesson on giving, and if they aren't giving, you know, then, then of course, you don't know, but if they are, you know, honest about it, well, you know, if you're not going to give, well, then we're not going any further. Well, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is a growing process. That are challenging the structure of the material, um, asking, well, have, have we considered rewriting the material for what purpose? I'm sorry, I didn't maybe. Oh, I, I, I had one young man that um, I, I think we were on lesson two, one uh -huh. or two, and he questioned, well, have you guys considered rewriting this? You know, and, and well, I will tell you, see, I, not, <laughs> a little history. I was back at KCBT when they initially wrote this material, mm -hmm. and it has been rewritten. Really Many, many times. Not, not totally, obviously, but, and it's always been 16 lessons, uh, but it has been uh, modified many, many times over the years. I have so many different versions of D1 lessons at home. Uh, so I would say it has been modified, but every time you modify it, then someone else thinks, well, you, you did this, and you, I don't like that, and I want you to do this. So uh, well, the challenge there was that I felt like he was more focused on the material not being what he expected, more so than absorbing the material yeah. and applying it to his life, and then not wanting to. What, yeah, I don't know how you handle that, but you know we have the sixteen lessons, and 
I felt like, well, let's go through one, two, three, so on and so forth. He wanted to jump to another, like to, to the Holy Spirit yeah. um, lesson rather than... How would, how would you handle that? Well, I think you have to be careful if someone's trying to prove... If they come from a different church with maybe different doctrines, I, I think they do need to understand that they are here at our church. We are going to teach what we believe. You're not here to try to convince me of something else. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you need to stick with the lessons. I, I, I don't think it's a, a bad idea necessarily to sometimes go to another lesson that applies to an issue they might be dealing with at the time. I'd be careful with that because they may not be ready for that. The lessons are kind of set up in a progression, so they make right. some logical sense. Uh, but if there's a certain thing, you know... I've worked with a guy that, you know, was dealing with sin. So at some point in time, we kind of, we went to the dealing with sin lesson. Uh, so, you know, you just have to be a little bit careful with that. You know, I want to emphasize that these lessons are, we want you to stick with the material and follow the material, but don't be so hard and, f I mean, there is a, there's a, a balance there. Don't be so hard and fast that you, you know, you go through it and you don't, we're going to talk about rabbit trailing and, and some of those things. I mean, they can be good, they can be bad. Uh, you know, <laughs> you're going to find out I'm not one of those black and white people. It's all, you know, when it comes to the Word of God, okay, black and white. But, but you know, when it comes to some of these issues, when you're dealing with someone, it's a little bit of shade of, of gray and, and what is their personality? What is their motivation? That's the reason it's a, it's a relationship. You need to get to know them and where they come from and why they're doing this and, and what they want to get out of it. Uh, and if, if, again, if they're just looking to check this off their list, uh, I mean, I still do it. Uh, but the only thing that it concerns me when you do that is like, okay, they check it off. They get through the 16 lessons. They check it off their list. And now they think they've been discipled. And they really haven't. But I've known lots of people that have come back and said, I need to go through the discipleship again. And that's not unusual. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's not, you know, so I, I'm always, I don't consider it a failure when you, you don't make it through. Uh, if, if someone wants to go through discipleship once, uh, number one, again, do you recommend that they do it again with a mentor, or is it okay if they just read through the material again? I would say they need to go th through with someone again. With someone. I mean, I, again, that depends if they're across the country, moved out of the city or whatever. It's like, well, you can't, yeah. Or I guess you could do it online. Uh, but I think this D, the D1 one lessons are really designed for one-on-one, -on -one, to build a relationship. I think there's a level of mentorship in there. Mm -hmm. And like learning how to, because you, you might be taught how to walk, but seeing how someone else walks it and talks it, yep. it starts to apply to your life and you say, well, you're falling short of it. That's, that's one of the reasons... Testimonies are so powerful, so they can kind of see, see what you do. That's all, you know, as a discipler, you are setting the example for them, for them to follow. Uh, so, you know, that, that just calls us into, you know, and, you know are, we, are we who we need to be? Are we doing what we need to be? Uh, I think it's good for them to know uh, your experiences as a Christian and, and in your, in your uh, uh, testimony so that they don't, Look at you, it's like, oh, you've had your act together all your life. And none of us have. We've all been in places we didn't want to be that we shouldn't have gone, gone to and done things that would. Uh, so it's very good for your disciple to know that's like, oh, you struggled with that too? Yeah, yeah. It's like we all, you know, these are, you know, there's no uh, uh, sin. It was such as common to man. So, so it's good for them to know that. And that's how you, you build that relationship, uh, you know. It, and, and I will say this, and I said it again uh, before, every time I take someone through discipleship, I learn something new. It's like, I'm learning too. We're learning together. And I think that's important to let your disciple know. It's like, we're, we're in this together. I'm just here to guide you with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so. Uh, so on the next, there's a sheet here, I think, that you probably have. You have the cheat sheet for your first lesson. Okay, so, I mean, this is kind of just uh, an example. 
And so it can be uh, very dependent on your personality. You can kind of use this to get started. Uh, I mean, what you might do, you know, some of the things you go through. Again, give your testimony three minutes. I think that's short. Uh, so uh, sometimes I think your first lesson, your first get together may not be your first lesson. It may just be like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm Sean, you're, you know, and you get to know each other, find out, you know, some of your background and give your testimonies. And that may be the only thing you get through, but that's building the relationship. And that's kind of your, your foundation that you start on. Uh, so, you know, give some examples of what, how this has helped in your life. What did it do for you? Because we learn uh, by example. And, you know, we're going to talk about responsibilities here in a minute. Uh, and for not only you, but for the disciple. Um, looking up all the verses, I, you know, I, I don't know how you all have done it. Some of you have. Uh, you know, I might get in trouble for this, but when I take someone through discipleship, we typically do not read every verse in the, when we're going through it. I make, I make sure that they have gone through the lesson and have looked up every verse and read it before we meet. And then I'll pull out key verses. I've just found like if you read every verse in some of those lessons, an hour and a half may go by and you haven't done anything but read verses. And that's great. Uh, but again, that's kind of a personal thing. Whatever works for you all. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you can go back and forth. Just looking them up in your Bible can take some time. So, so again, uh, this is kind of a guideline. Uh, but I do expect my disciple to have gone through every verse in that lesson. Uh, so, uh, lesson one, salvation. There, there should be a focus of, of uh, each lesson. Uh, a function for each lesson and main points uh, they used to, yeah. Quick question, sorry. Yeah. You said make sure the disciple goes through every verse. So do you have them go back and read it after you've gone over the lesson, or do you have them read it ahead before you meet? I have them read it ahead. Okay. I like for them to go, th I, I tell them go through the lesson, mm -hmm. read the verses, answer the questions. Mm -hmm. And then we come together, um, and with most disciples, it's not always been this way. And then we come together and we go through the lesson again, step by step, and pick out certain verses mm -hmm. that I think, okay, let's, let's, let's read this one. And then they can have their questions ready. Yes, have yes, have their questions ready. Uh, so it's kind of like, almost like, I, I expect them to have been through the lesson before, mm -hmm. and then we do a review. Now, I mean, I'm not saying you have to do it that way, uh, but I find that that way they have some familiarity with the material, and they aren't just getting it right. And they've had time uh, to write questions out. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. So, and again, these are guidelines. You have to tailor them to how you do things and your, and your disciple. Uh, you know, your disciple may be a new Christian. He may be a rededicated Christian. He might be a mature Christian. We often have people that come from other churches that have been deacons in their church um, and they want to get involved in ministry. Well, one of the things we require for a lot of ministries is that you've been through D1. So we may ask that person, well, we'd like for you to go through D1 with one of our people. Uh, and that may be just a simple review, but then you may find out that oh, they've been a deacon for 20 years in their church. It's like, oh, I never heard of anything. That can happen. So it's all an individual thing. Uh, you have to be insightful enough to determine uh, if the material is sinking in and the goals are being met. And that just comes with, with doing it. You know, uh, we have some checklists, we have some guidelines, but it's, it's not as simple as just, okay, done that, done that, done that, done that. There are some uh, checklists now that we have in the uh, end of uh, discipleship uh, lessons that uh, ask you, have your disciple met these goals? Uh, you all know what I'm talking about that have done this. Uh, you don't do that with your disciple typically although I have at times, uh, just, but it's just kind of a checklist. But again, you go through that checklist, it's just kind of keep us honest. Yeah. Uh, it's not, you know, okay, I, I filled all the boxes. Uh, so it's a process. It's like, say, a matter of uh, transference of life. So uh, if you miss the boxes, you need to go back and make sure. Yeah, you, you need to go back and cover it, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just kind of an evaluation to make sure that, because disciplers can get to the point where it's like, okay, I've checked that. I've done this. I've, you're discipled now. We went through the lessons, and, and nothing really happened. Uh, 
so, so yeah, uh, a, again, it's, it's a relationship. You kind of have to gauge each one uh, as you go through it. Uh, so, I, you know, we, we, yeah, I always have them memorize at least one verse. I don't know if you all do it. Some, some people say you need to memorize all three. Uh, so, and those people are just usually the ones that can memorize anything and everything. I can't. Uh, so I always say memorize one of them. Um, uh, it, we're going to talk about that in a minute. All right. <clears throat> All right. So how to set up your notebook. How to set up your notebook. Uh, and your notebook should obviously have the 16 lessons. You need to make it your own. Uh, if you ever saw my wife's discipleship book, I mean, it is crammed full. Of, I mean, she has illustrations, things that fold out, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know if it's a, a woman thing, I don't know, is it kind of, I don't know, uh, not necessarily, but uh, mine's not like that so much, but, but it, you know, I've got all sorts of illustrations that I've written in, you know, different experiences that I've gone through, uh, you need to, just like your Bible needs to have notes in it, your discipleship lessons should have notes in it, and the more you go through it, the more you'll have, and never be ashamed of stealing other people's material because if you hear a good, good example or good illustration, use it. Uh, add pages in. Uh, uh, I have, again, in the past, in fact, someone years ago printed up discipleship lessons like this that had every scripture printed on the facing page. And it's a great idea. However, then you don't get in use of your Bible. Uh, you know, you're not turning the pages. Ah, you know, it's, it's a balance. And, you know, and, and when it comes to electron, I love my electronic Bible and my phone. I got to say, it's so great to use. But when I use it too much, I miss my paper Bible. So, I, you know, again, that's a balance too. Uh, I think it's good when you go through these lessons with your disciple, especially if they're a young Christian, that you use a paper Bible so that they get to know how to navigate through their Bible. Uh, uh, I don't know, maybe in 10, 20 years we won't be saying that because everybody will be using electronic devices. But, but, and it's good, you know, you, you, well, you couldn't put notes. Well, now you can put notes in your electronic device. Uh, but, you know, anyway, it, it, again, I think some of that's a, a matter of tests, taste. Okay, so you might want to put tabs in there, three-ring binder. But all the stuff you put in your discipleship, lessons. Don't, don't teach everything you know. That's just something to keep in mind. Don't teach everything you know. But use your discipleship book as a resource book. Uh, for for different, pe different disciples are going to need different things. So, uh, you know, as, as disciples, we have to be careful that we don't teach everything we know to our disciple because sometimes it can really get them they're not ready for, for things. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just know I, years ago there was a, a lady that worked for us, uh, at the business we had, and uh, she started coming to church, and she started learning some. I didn't take her through discipleship. I think, I'm not sure anybody did or not. I don't, but she was learning all sorts of things about Revelation and, you know, Mark of the Beast. And, and she would go out and talk to her friends about all this stuff, and they thought she was a little crazy. So you just have to be careful and know your audience. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, don't answer questions they're not asking at times, just like with your kids. Uh, you, you know, if they're asking questions, okay, but sometimes you don't want to ask, answer stuff that they aren't, aren't ready for. Uh, so, uh, you know, introductory material for your first night should be welcome at the philosophy of discipleship, uh, you know, 2 Timothy 2, 2, the things that hurt us, me among many, which is the same coming down the paper, men be able to teach others also. Uh, and then the pattern for biblical discipleship uh, and the four goals of discipleship. We cannot emphasize those enough. Okay, so those are, you know, your introductory material, then your responsibilities. Uh, we're going to look at those in a minute. You should go over those uh, the first night, set expectations, and establish the commitment level. Uh, need to let... Uh, like Sedona said, let people know what they're getting into. Uh, it is a commitment. Uh, we don't want to set someone up for failure. They may not be ready for it. Uh, so, again, you can kind of get a feel for that. Uh, you want to make sure that they are attending church. Church attendance should be part of, of you know, 
what their commitment is. Uh, you know, your weekly meeting, they should be committed to that. Uh, but people come from all sorts of backgrounds, so we need to deal with them on their level. Uh, there are tips on what to do. There's also tips on what not to do, what to avoid. You know, politics is not a good thing to get into uh, with your disciple. I don't yeah. know. I mean, oh, sorry, I'm yeah, sorry. go ahead. What if the church sets you up with someone that attend, uh, well, visited the church, saw that we had a discipleship program, signed up for the discipleship, yeah. but isn't a member here and really has no plans to be a member here and isn't attending church regularly. Well, again, I, I, I think if you see some progress, then maybe, but uh, I, you know, I wouldn't push, you know, your time is important too. Mm -hmm. So you can't just spoon feed someone. They have to make a commitment to it as well. Uh, I know, I don't think we want to have a, a closed, kind of like a communion. A communion is, you know, it, 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 we, if your life beliefs, you know, you're welcome to take part of a communion. Uh, if you don't believe what we believe, then you probably shouldn't. Uh, discipleship lessons, I, I, you know, I, I think it's fun to go with, through them with someone outside of our church. Uh, there have been differing opinions on that, uh, but we sometimes mail these to people across the country because we feel like well, it's good material even if it doesn't accomplish what we, the ultimate of, of what we want it to, it can do some good. So I would say in a situation like that, if there's no intent on going to church anywhere, I don't know how far I would go with that. Because well, it, doesn't, it doesn't give the, it kind of completely doesn't hit any of the four goals. So, yeah. And that, so right. if it's yeah. not that's, one of the four goals, you know. but you can use it as a Bible study. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's not necessarily has to be D1. It can just be studying the Bible with them, and and then they might come to the point where they're like, oh, okay, great. I do want to know more, and this right. is why. Because if you can't see where they're going in the local church, they yeah, you're not. It's not yeah. Well, that individual is kind of hopping around right. various churches. Well, and maybe going through the material would be let them know what we believe, at least the first few lessons. Uh, I mean, go through the first lesson on salvation. I mean, maybe they're not even saved. Maybe they get saved, you know. Uh, but, you know, when you start getting to baptisms, you might find out, well, they, you know, they don't think they have to be immersed in the, those sort of things. I, 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 again, the first few lessons, you know, not, I don't think with a person like that you're going to get through 16 lessons because at some point in time they're going to, yeah. Uh, but it might draw them in, and if it does, praise the Lord. If it doesn't, well, just let it go, I guess. Uh, do what, you know, whatever good we can get. His company moved him to a different city. I think there are some folks. We were supposed to continue on Zoom. Yeah, that's hard. There are some folks that just, again, want to take... I was, when I was young, I was like, uh, navigators, I got it. I went through all the material, and there was, I don't there was different ones. Uh, Gideon's, I think, had some discipleship stuff, and you did it mail order. You, you know, that was about, I mean, okay, I'm showing my age. But everything came in the mail, and you know, you filled out, you took the lesson, you filled out the answers, and you mailed it back in, and, and at the end, you got a certificate. Okay. Uh, some people are just into collecting certificates, and that's okay. That can be, a, you know, we give certificates out. It's great. <laughs> I mean, it's a great motivation, but that's not the goal. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, if that makes any sense. Okay. Uh, it talks about a maturity map here. Uh, that is uh, f f uh, create a spiritual growth plan for your disciple. Uh, and it's something, you know, you don't want to uh, share necessarily with them. This is a good idea. So you can look at your ch the church calendar and look at those things that – uh, can help get them involved in accomplishing the goals. You know, for uh, goal one in worship, you know, you want them in there for Sunday morning service uh, I mean, where we worship together. Uh, uh, feed the soul is a great way to experience worship uh, because when, we, when you're praying with folks, you're worshiping. Uh, goal number two, the Word of God. Uh, there are certain classes we have. There's men's studies, ladies' studies. Uh, get them involved in that. Like I say, look at the calendar. See what's going on. 
uh, and get them involved. Goal three, fellowship, you know, there's church activities. Sometimes we haven't had picnics for a long time uh, because of COVID so much, but uh, those things will come back. Uh, but there are some church-wide events. Uh, and in ministry, well, draw them into those areas of service and ministry. There, there's a difference between service and, and ministry. Service, uh, and I... You don't have to put things in boxes so much, but service is where you're doing. You know, when they, when they put in the playground equipment out here, that was a great example of service. It wasn't, <coughs> wasn't ministry. Uh, you, when, but when you're doing discipleship, you're doing ministry. When you're doing Bible study, you're, you're doing ministry. So there's a difference. When you're cleaning the church, that's an area of service, and everybody should be involved in some of both. Uh, Back when I was young, if you were part of what we could then called shepherd school, they required you to be involved in uh, service, uh, cleaning the church and that sort of thing. So everybody should do a little bit of, of each. Okay, so, uh, uh, yeah. Where, at what point should you, like, encourage them to be in service, like, from lesson one, or once they kind of turn a little bit, like, in the midway? Well, no, I think as, as the opportunity arises, I think that... that Service is a good way to bring in young or new Christians or you, you just, at the very get-go because you don't have to be prepared to do service. You know, if you can crank a wrench, you could have helped out here with the playground set. If you can run a vacuum cleaner, you can help clean the church. We don't do an awful lot of that around here, uh, but occasionally it comes up. So I would say get involved in service at the very beginning. Uh, and ministry, then again, is like one of our goals that we want to get them involved with eventually. And you know, get them involved in the ministries typically of, that you're involved in. So how would you encourage someone to get involved in that? Be like, hey, are you invested in anything? Is there anywhere that you would like to participate? Or how do you approach that and be like, you should be doing this? I th think the best way is to use your example uh, of, you know, I'm doing this. You want, to, you want to come along, if possible. I mean, it doesn't always work that way, but that's the best way to do it. Uh, or just make them aware. We, we print out so much stuff and hand it to you on a Sunday morning. Uh, and I don't know. Some people I know read it. Other people, it's like, I'm always amazed. You know, I work in the church. I don't work in the church office anymore. I'm a volunteer, but I'm still there a lot. And I'm always amazed at people call and say, I didn't, I didn't know this such and such. was like, I don't, we have advertises, and people would complain. It's like, well, I didn't know what was going on. It's like, how can you not know? But okay, uh, <laughs> I don't tell them that. But we put so much, we, we put so much stuff out there. Sometimes, I, I don't know, maybe we flood them with information so they don't read it. I don't know. But there's a lot going on. So I would make them aware of what's going on, particularly those things that you're involved in. Uh, is the best way to pull them in because again it's a it's a relationship uh, so yeah we talked about a journal information handouts uh, that we you know again we're talking about things in the notebook we're getting a little uh, off the, the issue but our subject but things that you put in your notebook handbooks uh, something that's helped you uh, you know per, when it comes to the Word of God uh, some people don't understand our stance on the King James Version uh, there are some information literature out there that you might want to have in your in your uh, D1 book to say well here you know read this uh, or you know creation some of those things uh, I, you know rabbit trails uh, again people differ on this I don't think they're bad if they're not at the expense of the lesson uh, depending on how much time you have you may not have time for all those rabbit tails trails but sometimes they address the things that are really of concern in, in their life at the moment. So you want to uh, pay attention to that as well. But we do want to get through the lessons. Uh, and typically the lessons will cover those rabbit tails at some point in time. Uh, may not be where you're at in lessons at the moment. Uh, and you may want to say, well, let's, well, let's wait on that until we get to that lesson. Uh, but that doesn't always work because it may be something pressing in their life. So... We want to be flexible. Uh, so, uh, so how do you instruct them to set up their notebook? Okay, uh, well, encourage them to keep paper handy in their notebook. 
uh, questions they want to ask, write them down. I always get a little frustrated when I'm talking to someone. Do you have any questions? I had some, but I can't remember what they were. <laughs> this is, well, when you're going through the lesson, write them down. <laughs> uh, write them in the lesson. I don't care. Uh, again, it depends on the personality, their personality. Uh, notes from their own Bible reading. Uh, thoughts or questions they have about passages in the Word of God that they are reading, and hopefully they're reading through their Bible. We want to encourage them to do that. Uh, Preaching and teaching notes. Sorry, good question. Yep. Wouldn't that be like a rabbit trail? What's that? The notes from their own Bible reading. Like, what if that kind of gets into an involved conversation? And it could be. Uh, and again, I, I, I take a kind of a balanced view on rabbit trails. I don't think they're bad. Uh, just be careful that you're drawing it back to the lesson at some point in time. And it depends on how much time you have. If you have lots of time... Uh, Say I went, went, we went through discipleship with a couple when I was in Montana. They were the best disciples because they always had incredibly good questions. The problem was when I finally got up from that table, I could hardly stand because we'd been sitting there for three hours. Uh, but we had a great time, and I loved it. They loved it. So okay, praise the Lord. But you can't do that with everybody. Uh, so uh, again, it's it's a balance, and we did a lot of rabbit trailing, but we got we did get through the lessons too. And I think, you know, you have to be careful. It's like, okay, oh, enough of that. Let's get back to where we're at. Uh, so, okay. So preaching notes uh, from Sunday morning, that's, that's fine. It's good to, you know, uh, why does Alan have a handout each and every Sunday? Well, one of the reasons he has that is because you write things, when you write things down, it, 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 yes, it kind of impresses them upon your mind. Uh, so just having some of those things can be helpful. I always fill out those handouts on Sunday mornings. I, I don't ever go back and review them. Maybe you do. I don't know. But, but you know, it's a good thing if you want to, and maybe your disciple wants to. Uh, so uh, develop their own one word and one sentence summary of each lesson. Ask your disciple to do that. Uh, or they can use yours. It's always good to uh, siphon or uh, distill things down into in a, in a few words. Uh, and they should also have ideas they want to record about how to teach lessons when they disciple someone because that is, that is one of the goals that we have. Many, many won't make it. Uh, I've had a few people that I've taken through discipleship that have gone on to disciple others. Have some of you had that? But many, of it's like we go through discipleship and, 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 you know, it's good for them. It's good for them, but they don't go on to disciple. And some, sometimes people you're taking through discipleship, they're, they're okay. They just don't have the personality for it. That's okay. We're all different. We all have our, have our place in the body. Uh, so reminders. Uh, construct a reasonable structure for yourself and stick to it. Uh, be accountable to your disciple. Just be on time and in line. Uh, watch for tests God is giving your disciple which reveal his or her heart. You know, patience is displayed by completing a task over time. Faithfulness is doing it against opposition, and God wants us to develop both of those in our disciple, as well as in us. Uh, ask what they're reading in the Bible. Uh, communicate with them during the week to build a relationship. You know, check up on them. I mean, again, this depends on your situation. Do you have time to do that? Uh, texting now, you know. Uh, so the other day I'm talking to someone about some uh, good news club was involved in ministry. And I asked him, I said, so, you know, I sent you an email about, you know, what we're going to do and how all this is. Oh, I never read my emails. Like, okay, all right. Uh, text me. Okay, all right. So that's the new thing. You know, of course, I was back in the day. It's like, you know, you sent somebody, you called them on the phone and uh, maybe left a voicemail. I don't know. Uh, their voice message, I'm sorry, I'm getting my... Yeah, tell, well, okay, let's not go back that far. Uh, but, it's, you know, so then it was email. So you send somebody an email. It was so easy. You send out these mass emails and everybody, you know, you could, it was easy to do. Well, now we've gotten to the point, people get so many emails, they don't read them. So now you, if you really want to get some... So when I sent that about last week, it's like I emailed everybody. I thought, I better text them too, because I know... Because she just told me, says, oh, I never read my emails. Well, why do you have one then? I don't get it, but okay. Okay. Uh, so I don't know what it's going to be the next thing. You know what the next thing is going to be? is like you're going to write out a note 
put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, mail it to them, and they're going to think, oh, what's this? I have <laughs> it's going to grab their attention. I don't know. Anyway, I'm, right. I'm sorry. I'm rabbit trailing. Okay, so uh, reminders. Uh, sit with them in church. I build up that relationship. You know, we're, we want to check in on them. We don't want to check up on them. We don't want to feel like, you know, we're overbearing, but we want to be a Barnabas. Barnabas, Barnabas encouraged. He was, he was, he, he built people up. That's what edification is. You know, we have a building, it's called an edifice, and that's where the word comes from. Edification is to, to build someone up. Uh, it's discipleship, not preaching. We don't want to preach at our disciples. You don't have to do it every Sunday. And again, that it is personal dependent. Uh, but I think if possible, depending on the person, uh, uh, you know, if, if she's married and you're not, might, she's sitting with her husband, and I, you know, might not be appropriate. All by themselves. Yeah, but if they're all by themselves, yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, and, and that's part of helping them be connected with the fellowship of the believers, getting involved with the church. Uh, so a lot of these suggestions are, you know, not things you have to do, and every one of them, but they are suggestions. Uh, always encourage them. Uh, uh, stay in touch even after you've uh, completed the lessons. Uh, be close. I, you know, I admit that I haven't been real good about that. I'm kind of out of sight, out of mind. Uh, all the folks that I, I love and still love when we were in ministry in Montana, I don't contact them very often. Uh, be better than I am. <laughs> Just touch best base one once in a while. It's good because it is a lifelong process. You'll hopefully develop some. With some, you will develop a relationship that is lifelong. With others, not necessarily. Uh, it kind of depends on you and them. Uh, so D one is not really finished until they're established in ministry. I will say D one is you know discipleship is never completed, but we need to help them along in getting established in ministry. That's a uh, the final goal. Uh, encourage them to get baptized and become a member of the, member of the church uh, if they're not. And uh, uh, I'm surprised sometimes how many folks in our church that feel like they're members, they're, but they're not. Uh, we do have official membership roles, and sometimes we have people that want to be involved in ministry, and so uh, they, you know, fill out an application or want to get involved in this or that. And, and I've called them and says, you know, uh, we would love to have you, uh, but you're not a member of our church. We kind of want you to be a member of church. I'm not. No. Well, I'm there every Sunday. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's real easy to do. All you have to do is go up and talk to a pastor on a Sunday morning or just somewhere, you know, in, you know, making a, it's not hard to do. Uh, so encourage them to be a, a member of the church. Uh, Encourage them at Lesson 10 on giving to start tithing uh, as an expression of God having first place and f uh, of their first fruits. Uh, um, yeah. So the, the, the one before that, um, notify the pastor or D1 ministry leader. Who is the, the D1 ministry leader now? Uh, that, that would be your class pastor. If you're not involved in a class, the ministry that you are involved with. So, and you would be branded. There's no one person that's over. Not else. really. You know, uh, Brent Honker uh, has kind of organized the discipleship ministry uh, in the process of COVID. Uh, that's kind of morphed into giving more responsibility to the class pastors over the folks in their class that are going through discipleship. So, they should be your, your point of contact. However, if you're not involved in a class, not everybody is. Uh, than the ministry that you're involved with. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, well, he still does certain functions. Certain functions. But, uh, yes. Yeah, Rich and, Rich and, uh, and Kim, yeah. 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 Kim, in fact, Kim asked me the other day, he says, how are you doing with so-and-so? So -and, -so? and it's like, not so great, because uh, it happens to all of us. Uh, so she's the one that keeps track of those, those, that information, that details. Now, if you have a question about something you know, you're struggling with to get through, then I would go to your class pastor or 
like I say, pastor of your ministry you're involved in. Did you have a question, sir? Uh, I know that Kim contacted me and told me that when I was going through it with my daughter is the fact that each one of us that are discipling uh, has a pastor that they're assigned to. Yeah. That is assigned to us as, as uh, disciples. Yeah, so now are you a member of a class, Sunday school class? No. No. Uh, so someone would probably have to... Uh, the, Pastor Dave. Well, then it would, could be Pastor so. Dave, yeah. yeah. So they might have to assign someone to you for that, that function. Uh, like I say, the first go-to is if you're involved in a Sunday school class, but not everybody is. Uh, you know, people are involved in doing, teaching Sunday school. Sunday school. Well, you teach Sunday school and you go to church. Well, you can't. It's hard to be involved in a class. So, uh, so you might have to be assigned someone. Okay. So, uh, we want to get them involved in our ministry. Uh, you know, and it is a progression. Uh, oftentimes, the way we do that is like invite them to be involved, come to the ministry that we're involved with, and I'm doing this. You come. You come and you just watch. Uh, you know, I help with Good News Club. If you want to be part of Good News Club, I'd love, love to have you just come and just watch. And, and then at some point in time, we, we're doing it together. You start doing it together. You know, let's do this together. Uh, and then eventually you say, okay, you, you take the reins, and I'll just watch you. And then eventually they've got it, and they're inviting their disciple to come in with them. So it's a, it's a progression. Okay, so responsibilities. Responsibilities of the discipler. <laughs> And it's not a set of rules, but it's commitments. And you really should get, go through them before you get started so they know what to expect, set expectations. And you, both of you need to be held accountable uh, for, for getting this done. Uh, we don't want to be legalistic. Uh, you know, I've heard all sorts of guidelines that others have set for you. Uh, and like, well, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. It's like, well, okay. And there are some pretty... You know, when it gets too far out there, we need to be careful. But it is, you know, I, I tend to have too much patience with people. I know I do. Uh, but the converse of that is not have any patience at all. So where's the balance? Uh, you need to set that for you and your disciple and what you're willing to, uh, to tolerate sometimes. Uh, the disciple needs to be dedicated, make it a priority. Things come up. Sometimes you can't, you know, you can't be there. That's okay. Uh, but it shouldn't happen all the time. Be consistent. Uh, be there uh, when your disciple is. And, you know, we should be on time. Uh, be knowledgeable, so be prepared. Uh, be responsible. If you're going to expect your disciple to memorize verses, well, then you need to memorize them as well. Uh, Rememorization is easier. So once you've been through these lessons a few times, you start memorizing the same thing over again. It's not so difficult to do. Uh, be patient, expect growth, but not perfection. God is patient with us. Uh, be faithful, live, uh, you know, live your lip and walk your talk. So in other words, you, if you don't be a hypocrite. Uh, be motivating. Uh, inspiration is addictive. Uh, so we build, if you come in and you're like, okay, let's go through these lessons and we'll get this done and we'll get out of here. Well, it's not going to be very exciting, so... Uh, you need to be excited about lessons. Be flexible. Uh, it, you know, it, it takes time for a, a disciple to kind of change their life and grow in this. So we're in this together. Uh, you know, so again, I said it before, but it, you know, if you only make it through a few lessons, okay, that's still something. Uh, it's worth the effort. Okay, so and then the disciple. The disciple needs to be consistent, coming to church, arriving for lessons. Uh, don't be taken advantage of if they're not serious. And only you can really decide that because you're in the, in the relationship with them. Be dedicated. They need to be uh, doing the memory verses, answering questions at the end. Uh, you know, that's kind of a litmus test sometimes. It's like if you ask them to memorize one verse and they never do, well, then I don't, you know, are they, are they or, 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 you know, and maybe you want to ask them this. It's like, can I see your book? See if they've answered the question. I mean, I, you know, I'm not usually that in your face, but sometimes like, I didn't write any uh, answers down to those questions. 
Because if they're not doing any of that, and you get the sense that they're not spending any time with that lesson before or after, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I mean, that may be up to you whether you want to continue or not. Uh, they need to be accountable, learn the lesson, make application, uh, and allow you to ask questions about them. Uh, and they should be uh, allowed to ask questions about you and your struggles as well and your victories because we learn by, uh, by example. Uh, be diligent. We want to complete the lessons. Uh, you know, the goal is one lesson a week, uh, but it may take a lot longer, a lot longer. Sometimes it takes much longer. Okay, and then there's a bibliography, bibliography there. Uh, some different books. Uh, that last one, uh, With Christ in the School of Discipleship, is an old book. That's actually, I th believe, where we get the seven stages of discipleship that we'll be going through in semester two. Okay, so to get going, get going. Procedure and structure for a meeting. Again, this is all hands-on stuff. We're not going to get as far as I wanted to, but that's okay. Okay, so same time, same place, same process. Uh, we are people of habit, but we don't want to be too rigid about it. Establish a time frame to take a couple of hours to cover the lesson. Uh, you know, that's going to be uh, varies depending on you and the disciple and their background. Uh, how much do they understand and, and need to know? Uh, do they know some of these uh, terms or do they need to be defined? Don't make assumptions. Uh, that they know your Christ, your, your, your Christian vernacular. Okay? Uh, establish a relationship, fellowship together, make sure you've covered the material, uh, but make sure you have some time to just talk. Uh, be sensitive uh, to the Holy Spirit and your disciple regarding what is going on in their life. Uh, many times you don't need to set aside the lessons because they actually have application to the, the situation. You may have to modify the lesson as you go through it to apply to what they may be facing in that moment. Uh, but if you do set aside, uh, make your time together a discipleship lesson on a particular problem. So there may be times where you have to set aside the lessons. Try to not do that every time. Try to avoid that. Again, redirect the lesson to the specific problem if you can, but you may have to set that all aside and say, well, let's, let's just talk about what's going on. Uh, teach them about building a structure. The lessons build on one another. I think it's always important to give the continuity of the lessons. Uh, when I do a lesson, I always say, okay, last week you talked about this, and this week we're going to talk about this topic and next week we're going to talk about that and they start seeing the continuity uh, there is a reason for the order uh, the Christian life is a progressive process so uh, you know we don't want to put baptism in before we put salvation in obviously uh, and so some of those things are basic and, and they make sense as you start seeing how they, they go through look up all the verses directly in the Bible so they will, will rely on the word of God and not on you okay and I, again I have I expect them to look them all up before, we don't always look them all up in the lesson, but they need to understand that those verses are not something that you're quoting off the top of your head, that they are found in the Word of God. And believe it or not, there's sometimes people don't, don't really understand that. You know, God helps those who help themselves. <laughs> Book, chapter, verse. People think that's in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. Uh, so, so, so don't make assumptions about what they know and don't know. Uh, so establish expectations up front. We will first review memory verses, then do a lesson, finally deal with questions, false teaching. You know, that's just, that can vary. I, I always have the memory verse at the end. Uh, now, some people like it at the beginning because all the way to the lesson, they're like, that was me. <laughs> They're like, repeating, repeating. So as soon as you get there, can I do my memory verse uh, to get it done and out of the way? Okay, I mean, that, that's all right. Uh, uh, but, you know, the, the, the purpose of memorizing verses is so you really have them in your memory. You know. But we all have to be pushed to do that, don't we? Uh, uh, so anyway, okay. Preparation to teach. There's a checklist uh, to help you set a structure for each time and meet with the disciple. 
Uh, and here, here it is. Uh, so they can be accountable. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe this isn't, wasn't your experience, uh, but these are some suggestions, some things that, you know, kind of uh, to, to hit on, make sure. Uh, but you have to be, anything you ask them to do, again, you should be accountable for as well. You know, show them your work so you can see uh, proof that you care about what you teach and that is not just idle words. Sh show them, you know, when you tell folks, well, you know, get your good Bible and write your notes in your Bible and your questions. Well, you should show them how you have done that in the past, uh, what you do. So uh, first, always pray. Uh, always open your time together by asking God to be a part, uh, which just makes me feel like a hypocrite because we did not pray when I started this. And every time we, you know, uh, we were... I know, I know. I mean, so you need to call me out on it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the opportunity you give us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. Uh, we ask that you do bless our time together, Father, and that your Holy Spirit would teach us out of your word. Amen. In Jesus' name. All right. I feel much better now. I don't know about you. Okay. Now we are ready. Uh, yeah, we've got 50, 30. Uh, yeah. Anyway, okay. But we want God to be a part. Be specific but brief in your prayers. And always start with a joyous note of, of praise. Always. You know, uh, the Lord's Prayer, I've heard people say, well, it's the disciples' prayer, it's not the Lord's Prayer. Okay, well, I don't know. But it is an example. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He starts out praising God. Uh, so we need to start out the same way. We're thankful for God. Uh, and ask, you know, we, we want to ask God to teach us and His Holy Spirit to teach us. I always, I always try to pray that because don't, don't count on me. Uh, we need the Holy Spirit to, to teach us out of His Word. Okay, so then after you pray, you know, go through verses, you know, make, make sure you have a full understanding of the verses before you use them. You should, you should know when you're preparing uh, that you aren't quoting verses that you don't know what they mean because they might ask you what they mean. Uh, so study them out. Hide them in your heart. You may want to add additional verses. There's oftentimes I go through the lesson and say, why didn't they include that verse? So I'll write it in. Uh, focus. Explain the focal point on, in the lesson. Uh, there used to be an asterisk in the old lessons. That was the main point. And for whatever reason, they've taken that out. I don't think it's in any of the, the new, newer lessons. Well, they, they have a little carrot. They have a carrot. You know, I looked at my recent lessons, and I didn't see even that. Maybe they've added it since, because they keep coming out with different versions. Uh, but I always thought that was really good. In, in fact, in my lessons that I have, I've always like, this is the, the main point. Uh, because you should be able to distill those lessons down into really one succinct point. Uh, and make sure you understand that and you know where it is so you can point it out. So it's like if they don't take anything else away from that time together, they, they, they have that. Uh, do you have a big picture understanding of the lesson yourself uh, and how it connects with the lessons around it? Uh, make sure you know the function. Uh, show them briefly the lesson. Uh, pre, you know, you always want to... It's like when you were taught in... Speech class, I guess it was. What did they teach you? You tell them what you're going to tell them. You tell them. And then you review what you told them. Right? You kind of want to do the same thing in discipleship lessons. So they kind of know where you're going. Uh, you know, what the, what the ultimate uh, idea is. And then you go through the material. And then once you've gotten through it, well, then you summarize it. Uh, uh, so uh, much that is familiar to you, to you is new to your disciple. We've talked about that before. Don't be afraid to repeat things. And at the end, have them repeat them back to you. Have them give you a summary of the lesson and how the Lord was speaking to them. Ask them to put it in their own words. Uh, make sure you understand the false teachings. Why are these wrong? Uh, ask them if there's any problems. I always ask them, any problems or questions with the lesson? Uh, and address those briefly, if possible. Uh, you know, I, I love questions. I, I, I really, uh, sometimes I feel like a failure when we go through the material and it's like, we, well, we, we covered it, but uh, we didn't really get very, because that's how you, how you know if they're getting it, is by the questions that they ask. Uh, Aren't you concerned they're going to ask 
some that <clears throat> don't know how to answer. Sure, and that happens, but that's okay. I mean, you're not the Bible answer man. I mean, uh, so you may have to say, I'll study that out, get back with you. Uh, or that's a good question. I'm not sure either. I, I think that's not, you know, that's a good thing because they need to understand that you haven't arrived either because none of us have. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's a bad thing to ask questions you don't know the answer to and you can find it out and you can study it out together. And, and it might be like, hey, you study that out and I'll study it out and next week when we get back together, let's talk about what we found. Uh, make it interactive. That's and that part of that process. Uh, when you go through lesson one, you might read all the verses, but after lesson one, you can involve them in the uh, uh, you can involve them in the next lesson and have them read some of the verses. Uh, again, I I usually don't have us read all the verses, but I do have them read some of them. Uh, do not rush, but don't piddle around either. Again, we want want to try to cover a lesson each time you meet. Depends on your style, their style, doesn't always happen. Uh, when you go through the Bible passage, passages in the Bible, you can have them make small marks to enclose the verses. Okay, and I think there's a picture in your notes there about it. Uh, so you can, so, so I, just as a general rule, write in your Bibles. I mean, I, I have a, oh, I bring my Bible. Uh, but I have a wide margin Bible that I've had for years and years and years. Uh, I have notes all over it. You should see, ugh, my wife's Bible. Oh, you should see, it looks like spaghetti. Have you, anybody ever seen her Bible? It looks like spaghetti. <laughs> I mean, the margins. I mean, she has so much stuff in there. It's like, how do you... To me, it's like, that's too much because I couldn't find what I wanted. I, but it's fine. It's like, that's her style. It's okay. Uh, so mark in your Bibles. Get you, I, again, I want to encourage you. Get you a good, I would suggest, wide margin Bible. And Alan has always written in his in pencil because he can erase it. I have I've always written mine in pen. And sometimes it's like, okay, scratch that out. Uh, but write in your Bibles. Get you a good Bible. And be careful if you write with ink what kind of pen you use. Because some of them will bleed. Anyway, okay. Be patient. Uh, time at the end of the ses lessons can be used to talk about previous uh, work week, uh, but uh, w uh, we need to emphasize today, not tomorrow, for seeing how lessons apply to life, and also emphasize day by day. It's, you know, uh, this is a process. We need to pray daily. We need to be in the Word of God daily. We need to give, give regularly. We need to praise daily. Uh, we need to be intentional about those things because the, the nature of the flesh doesn't want to do those things. Uh, so we need to keep reminding ourselves by, day by day. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 talks about the inward, inward man being renewed day by day. We, you know, we grow in the Lord just like kids do. They grow. Uh, it's incremental. Uh, I like Isaiah 28, 10, for precept must be upon precept. And it says it again, precept upon precept, line upon line. Again, line upon line. Here little and there little. It's a, it's a growth process. Uh, so are these lessons being realized in your disciple? Uh, you know, at the end of the lesson, uh, ask this at the end of the lesson. So you do not have to stop the lesson time and they will not feel pressure. They can relax, or relax and tell you about what is going on in their life. And you can help them draw down the application. You know, the goal is not getting through the lesson. The goal is change lives. And, you know, to do that, we typically have to get through the lesson. But that's not the ultimate goal. Uh, use your life experience as an example. Uh, also, listen. Sounds simple, but how can you tell if God's working in their life if you do not hear it? Uh, you shouldn't be doing all the talking, in other words. Uh, let the Holy Ghost do His job through the Scriptures. And then you will be able to see God, the Word of God do the work in their life. Uh, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God are powerful. Uh, 
For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow. Anyway, I won't go on, but that's how I memorize scripture sometimes. I put them to, to, to music. Uh, so, and pray. Pray at the beginning and at the end of the lesson. So, that leads us to scripture memorization. Uh, letter C, it is a lost art. Uh, but it is so important. Uh, Psalms 119, 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Oh, we need to hide God's word, you know. And different things work for different people. So we need to give a method of memorizing scripture. Uh, just don't, you know, you can tell them, well, memorize the scripture. Memorize at least one of them. But it's best if you could give them some, some tools to do that. Uh, some people are good at it. Uh, some people it does not come naturally and remember you've done this before but they may have never done it so uh, be patient be gentle long suffering uh, you know you could take a moment just to memorize one together and kind of work on it together uh, usually when uh, sometimes I'll have them quote a verse to me uh, sometimes I'll say did you memorize one of these yeah <laughs> okay all right uh, but often I'll have them quote it to me, and then, you know, I'll try to quote it back to them and, uh, and help each other out. You know, it's, you know, it's like with your kids. You kind of like, next word is... Uh, so, again, usually most lessons have well, at least one verse that's pretty simple of the three. Uh, so I, I let them pick. Uh, one memorization method that's tried and true uh, that can make it simple is a set of index cards. And I, here you know, I always have these in my Bible case, okay? And what I do is at the end of the lesson, I tell them, okay, let's go to next lesson. And there's your memory, memory verses. Let's pick one out. And at the end of the lesson, I'll give them a card and we'll both write it down on a card. Uh, because you know how it is. I said, here, write it on an index card and, 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 and keep it on your dash and put it in your pocket and uh, just keep referring to it all day long. And you know what they do? They go home and they don't, they don't do that. Uh, and then the, 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 you know, on the morning of that we're going to meet, they're trying to memorize it on the way to... <laughs> to the meeting. Uh, so if, 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 you know, hopefully they don't lose it, Haley, but, but, you know, I have them write it out. We both write it out because it's, it's good for me too, because I'll get, a, I'll, like, I'll forget. It's like, oh, I forgot to, uh, and I'll have it in my pocket. And, you know, I don't, guy, ladies, I don't know about uh, ladies, but guys, you know, I always have stuff in my pockets. I put notes in my pocket. So I'm like, what is that? Oh, it's my memory verse. I need to, I need to work on that. Uh, so yeah, so I always have these. Uh, Put them on your refrigerator. Uh, I, again, I like to set them to song. Uh, and the difficult thing for me is what we call the, the address. You know, as kids, uh, uh, Sunday school, our good news club, we always call it the address, where it is in the Bible. Uh, I can usually memorize the, the, the verse. Okay, where is it? Uh, so, you know, write it all out. Have it ready for them. And, you know, they can use... Some people just write it out 20 times. Uh, that helps them memorize. There are many different ways. There's a, something called Scripture Typer. I have an app in my phone, which I don't know where it is. Uh, yeah, it's around here somewhere, sure. Uh, this morning I couldn't find it. My wife called, I don't know, half a dozen times. I finally found it. Uh, but you put in the verse you want to memorize, and it takes you through several steps, and usually will like, okay, it asks you to put in the first letter of each word. Uh, it's really pretty effective. So there are our, our Bible apps, or our, sorry, phone apps, uh, that you can get for memorizing verses. Uh, so use all those tools you can. Uh, Do you know the name of the app? Uh, That's okay. I'll find it. I'll, I'll, I can find it in my phone. But, you know, if you go to your app... Google Store or uh, Place Apple Store, whatever. Yeah, there are a bunch of them. Sometimes I'll put them on an index card, and the one thing that you look at every day 
is your bathroom mirror? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Right there, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so everybody's different. Uh, you know, I usually have them a lot of times sitting on the dash of my car, although I don't do as much driving as I used to. Uh, so whatever works for you. But I found uh, the nice thing about a card is it's something physical. Even if it's, you're using an app, well, you've got to remember to use your app. If you have a card, then it's like every so often, oh, there it is. Uh, you need to work on it. So, so there you go. Uh, reporting procedure. Uh, and this is what we talked about earlier that Kim takes care of. Discipleship progress reports need to be turned on your disciple typically after lesson 4, 8, and 16. So like every four lessons. I, I thought there was one after 12 too. I'm not sure. I think there's one every four lessons. Uh, just to keep uh, the pastor in your class uh, or over you at, in the discipleship kind of informed of what's going on. Uh, some class pastors are, are really good at this. They kind of want to check in with you. Uh, so it, maybe Kim will check, you know, she checked with me the other day <laughs> across the room. Hey, how's it going? It's like, eh. uh, because I hadn't filled out one of these for a long time because we frankly haven't met for a long time. Uh, so anyway, and they can help you with uh, problems that you might be encountering. Does your, does your uh, pastor, whoever you check in with, do they have a timetable on for you to turn these in as far as like, hey, I'd like to see this within a couple months or I want to see this within... Or no, I don't. It, it might depend on your class pastor if they've assigned, because typically they will be the one assigning it to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and they may at some point in time say, how's it going with so-and-so? I haven't seen anything for a while from you. Mm -hmm. So that might be a, a prompt. Uh, but, you know, I think they're just looking for information and, and they're concerned too about your disciple. Mm -hmm. uh, but... You just need to make sure that you're turning those in every four lessons and not forgetting about it. I can't say that I've ever been guilty of that. Uh, because some, at some point in time, Kim may come to you and say, you know, I haven't seen anything on so-and-so for a while. How's it going? If your class, disciple, or class pastor uh, hasn't done that. That's just kind of some of the, that's how it's working right now. Didn't used to always work that way, but that's right now kind of the, the method we set up to kind of, Make sure that, you know, it, you all know this, but please do not get someone assigned to you and then just totally drop the ball. That has happened. And we look, the office looks bad and it looks bad on the church uh, when you know, someone just asked to be discipled, calls the church office and says, you know, I, I put an application in a month ago. Nobody's ever called me. It's like we assigned it to somebody and that person never never got in touch. It's like, you know, if you can't do it, can't do it. Okay, let us know. Let us know. Okay, so uh, there's a list here of the mindset of uh, discipleship ministry mindset. I, you know, I think it's all there. I don't think there's anything, uh, you know, you can read that over uh, on your own. Uh, so strategic details on discipling, point three, general guidelines to assist you in presentation. Uh, information is based on experiences from previous, disi previous disciples uh, and it'll help you in your preparation. Uh, each disciple and disciple is unique, but there needs to be some standardization to make sure goals are met in a consistent way. Uh, as always, experience is the best teacher. So as you disciple people, you will get, you will learn how, what works, what doesn't work for you. Uh, uh, you know, my pages are different. This is point three. Roman numeral three, I'm sorry. Roman numeral three. Uh, you know, you can glean from the experience of others. So that's, that's good for you to have. Uh, you don't have to do it exactly the way someone else does it, but it's great to get suggestions. Uh, so, it should never be assumed the person sitting in front of you either knows or has personally applied the material in any one of the 16 lessons. For that reason, the teacher must be sensitive to a number of things. You know, some of these are going to be babes, some are mature in Christ, and everything in between, and in different ways. Uh, they may be a student of the Word. I've known people that are students of the Word of God. They know it inside out, and they are not applying it to their lives. Uh, so you have 
people in all sorts of different s situations. So before teaching, letter A, determine where and how many people, uh, how many people will be a part. I mean, so are you as a couple uh, or are you individually? If you're doing it as a couple, do you always meet together? Uh, or do you sometimes do separate? And that may depend on the lesson. It may depend on the couple. Uh, you know, when it comes to dealing with sin, well, guys usually deal with sin, different sins than ladies do. So you need to take that into consideration. Uh, so you may want to do that separate. Uh, maybe not. Uh, but, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. Uh, determine how much time you have to teach. Uh, each lesson, you will be able to cover a lesson in one session, or, or will you, or will you have to do it in two? Uh, are you flexible to stay in this time frame? Uh, you might have to retool any extra items you have. It's like, well, well let's, let's set that aside. Don't really have time for it. The main points of the lesson is what's most important. Make sure you get that in, get that main point across. Be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit as you teach. Can't emphasize that uh, enough. Uh, lesson structure, time, and personal illustration should all be a part of what a God is leading you to do. Always pray, Holy Spirit, oh Holy Spirit, lead me. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. Be prayed, be prepared, be soul conscious. Uh, we like to think that optimally it would take six to nine months to get through D1. Uh, you know, that's about what it took Jesus with the 12 disciples to get them through the first three stages of discipleship, which is kind of what D1 is. We'll talk about those stages later. But they lived together. Uh, we don't. You know, the disciples were living with Jesus. But we have other tools that they don't have. Uh, so, you know, six to nine months is, is optimal. But, you know, if you're doing it in, you know, 16 weeks, well, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, but don't feel like you have to get through it in that period of time. Uh, so I was hoping to get another page in, but we probably should draw it. Any other, we'll pick up in, uh, uh, the review. I think there's a chart in your notes there. Uh, we'll pick it up with there next week. Any other questions or comments? Okay, well, let's pray and we'll raise up out here. Father, we, we do thank you for uh, your word, the fact that we have a firm foundation upon which to stand. Uh, not only is Jesus our rock, but you've given us uh, your word, Father, uh, to stand upon. Uh, you've given us a church to, to work in, Father. You've given us the tools uh, that we need to be who we should be and how we can help others and, and, and disciple others in ministry, Father. Uh, we pray that we would avail ourselves of those tools, Father. Uh, may we be the people, the men and women that you've called us to be so that we can be the example to others, to lead them, Father, into a relationship with you that honors and, and glorifies you, Father, uh, that we might be a strong and vibrant church, that we aren't just, just playing church, that we aren't just going through the process, Lord, but we truly are serving and lifting you up that we might draw all men unto you, Father. We thank you for all you do for us and for your mercy to us, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So where is my phone? I'm getting really bad about le losing my phone. Let me shut this off. Yeah.